I can't wait! I've been waiting forever for this. I feel like it's been forever since we got together. The time for pointless jokes and jabs has passed. Trills, chills, kills. Let's get on with the show! And so the curtain opened for the fifth time. I'm not reading all these deadlies. Yes, let's save. Good old slot number five. All right, how's it going, King Kikoli? Welcome to trial five. Set skills. Do I have anything new here? Ambidextrous? Two lock onto two statements at once? Effective during the bullet time battle. Sure, why not? I don't think I have any other skills to use my extra two SP on, so that's everything. Cool. Let's check the evidence. File number five. Victim had been stabbed, went right through the body, also been struck in the head with an object, with a thick object, and the body was covered with other wounds, but they were at least several days old. You say covered with other wounds. I'm relating that to the scars that they said Kyoko had. However, Kyoko's clearly not dead. Or... That is Kyoko, and it's the mercenary lady who is disguising herself as Kyoko. If she's that good, that's not outside of the realm of possibility. Exploded body. Burnt the upper half of the body beyond recognition. It, it, she would... A, a crazy, powerful, like, and skilled merc like that would also know... To set up the body with, like, proper scars to throw somebody off the trail and make it think it was them. Plus, they went through a lot of trouble introducing this character. I'm not totally convinced that they would kill it off immediately. Upper half of the body remained on fire, the upper half is soaking wet, and the body remained dry. Fake nails. Wearing notably long fake nails. Tattoo on the right hand of a wolf, i.e. Fenrir. Fragments near the dead body came from the bomb that was inside uh, the Monokuma bot. The sprinklers come on every morning at 7.30. Impossible to change that. When the body was found was 9 o'clock. Knife at the crime scene was the one... Where did this come from? Same knife that had been used, this is the same knife Toko had given to Makoto for safekeeping, and the knife the Mask Scanlan was holding when they attacked Makoto. So I'm not sure where Toko got it, but she found it. Tarp, hidden among the other items in the tool shed. One side is wet and filthy, the other side is completely clean and dry. Chick co chicken coop chickens, one of them goes down. Yaki has stated there was no corpse after nighttime, so it must have taken some place after, after night, obviously. The body... Had a mask covering its face and a white jacket covering the body. Knife had been thrust in the abdomen. Body stopped bleeding, but the blood was still wet. Mukuruipi's Ikusaba, female, known as the ultimate soldier, obsessed with the military. Every member of Fenrir gets a tattoo somewhere on the body to represent their membership in the group. Monokuma, killing game, has 16 students. It is assumed Mukuru Ikusaba was the 16th. Also revealed that Kyoko wears gloves to hide something she doesn't want people to see. Woodblock key. This woodblock decoration was found in Kyoko's room. Titanium arrows were found in the locker that Key was for. Also, bloody duct tape. And Kyoko's account used Monokuma's secret tool grants access to any room in the school. And the second floor dorms have no security cameras. Okay. Let's go for it. Let's begin Jesus, with a basic place explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. All right, I've got myself into a tizzy here. I can no longer be confident that the Kyoko that we're looking at is actually Kyoko. Because my two working theories here, well, it's, it's not really working theories, it's two possibilities. I guess those things are the same thing. The obvious one, the dead body is Mukuro, Mukuraba, whatever the military girl is, and Kyoko killed her. Which means that this trial ends with Kyoko getting executed. Second possibility, that was Kyoko's body, and Military Girl is disguising herself as Kyoko here in the trial. I'm less confident how it ends that way. We're gonna have to find out. Okay, 
Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. Which we can't be a thousand percent sure of, but we can be like 95. It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. Hero, she's literally standing in the fucking circle. But Kyoko's standing right there. Thank you. No, that's a ghost. Can we just kill him, like, right now, as a group? Just accept that it should happen? But she has legs and stuff. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Evidently, ghosts can't have legs. They're only capable of floating with little wispy tails. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology. All right, shut up, hero. There's for fuck's sake. How much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? One important trait that Kyoko has approves a body doesn't belong to her. <laughs> gloves, face, and piercing glare. The gloves. I got it. I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? I do. In fact, Monokuma told Oh, that's right. Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. You were there, too. Oh, you know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? Yes, but it goes deeper than that. They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. There's no way that corpse was Kyoko, but if I can't prove why, we're going to be stuck here in the case we'll move forward. So I don't have any choice but to... Proceed, give me some bullets, let's see what happens. Tattoo in the right hand, exploded body analysis, and fake nails. It's the fake nails, it has to be. That Yoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Whoops. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. Right, I have to hit the the the, the yellow the thing. They got burnt up in the explosion. I'm a ghost? Interesting. And she was wearing gloves before the explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Because that corpse is absolutely cute. That's the one. It, she must have been this wearing gloves. Discussion is idiotic. Thank you, Byakuya. It's weird when I agree with you. I know I can prove it. All right, let's fast forward. Okay, then prove it. The dead body was... They got burnt up. Then she was wearing... Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Is that corpse? God damn it. Come on. This entire All right, I'm, I have to slow down time there. I always forget that's a thing until, like, an, 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 until I actually miss the shot. There we go. No, that's wrong. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Yes. Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. I, you don't know me either, Hero. I'm confident in saying if that. anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Thank you. Well, Kyoko, <laughs> any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Yes, but you know, we have to fucking placate the idiots among us. I'm with you on this. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. <laughs> You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. True. Before anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. There we go again. Sprinklers, exploded body, and tattoo in the right hand. Probably the tattoo, but I'll let them talk. This one's less obvious. Yoko really is still alive. Yes. Then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. 
The face was scorched beyond recognition. The face, sure. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... Then there's nothing else we can do, right? They want the tattoo on the right hand in one of them. Probably not the face, though. I'll go for the second one. Then who does? got to be some kind of thing, sir. The face was scorched beyond recognition. Uh, the, wasn't these spinning the pink things are really hard to read. Good, got it. No, it's wrong. There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? Yeah, nobody saw it? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. Stop looking so interested. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it. To be like, you're my bitch. Shh, I, I, I didn't. Mm. Not everybody thinks like you, Toko. Seriously? Really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. <laughs> the identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? To compare the tattoo to other information we have, the victim's identity should become clear. This one, right? No, not okay. Glad that I checked. It's in one of these, I just don't remember which one. Mukuro Ikusabas? Every member gets a tattoo somewhere on their body. Bam. I got it. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? Uh, big dog god. The image that represents Fenrir is... You, you seriously gonna make me do this? Ugh, I hate this game. Wolf. Yes, you, you gave me half of the word wolf. <laughs> Done in about yeah, three seconds. At least make those tricky if you're gonna waste my time. The representation of Fenrir is... A wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge, world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god, Loki. And a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. That's true. It's cool, and she actually does talk about books. And that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so one of my theories apparently just got thrown out the window. It's really Kyoko, and Mukuro's the one who died. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? No, it means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. Ah. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. It's a really weird name. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... You fucking little shit-headed Scottish bear. Whoops, sorry. I need to get this. Correction, no I did not. That was a, a robocaller. I, I had to... I have to check every call that comes in because, like I said, I'm expecting 
some contact from an animation gig this week. That's why my emails aren't loading. All right, I'll check that later. Kyoko, that's what you told Makoto, right? Oh wait, Kyoko told me? That's right. That's weird. So that means Kyoko got it wrong. Um, who was she? Who was Mikuro Hikusaba? She's been gone this whole time, and when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually, when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. Yeah, this is weird. So you're saying she wasn't an important character, which would mean she was the same as us, just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope Speak Academy headmaster, after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Yeah, but figuring this stuff out is kind of gonna lead us there. Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. I'm glad for this. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... One of us killed Mukuro? It's gotta be Kyoko. Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! <sighs> I, I was thinking that in the back of my brain too, I didn't want to say anything, but just the fact that Hiro brought it up means that it's wrong. Taka's dead, which means that Hiro takes his place as the automatically wrong one. Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then, one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. It's Kyoko, and she was doing it to defend me. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Yeah, me and Kyoko. Based on what we know, there can be only two suspects. Mukuro and the Headmaster. <laughs> You're very confident about Narrowed accusing yourself. Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden. So I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. And I know it wasn't me! Although, I, I think it wasn't me. Maybe I killed him in a fever dream. I don't know. The only suspects now are me and Kyoko. I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear um, my name. I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Mm -hmm. Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well... It was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Sure. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? About 9. The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. So what time is the body discovered? 9. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Toko, what time is it? 
We left the gym, it was just before nine, so it's probably nine on the dot now. Okay, go get pickaxe and be back here by non now one. He's right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between ten at night and nine in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after ten o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before nine this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh, yeah! Right around 7.30. Right. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Wait, wait, you said you went everywhere super carefully in pairs, and yet Hina went to the kitchen alone at 7.30. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. True. Murder happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., and I don't have an alibi from 10 to 7.30. Looks like the game has begun. If I can't, can't provide an alibi for that period, then I have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time I don't have one. To do that, I have to make it clear when the body ended up in the garden. The sprinklers turn on at 7.30. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10, 10 11, 12, 1, and 9 o'clock in the morning. Listen, get out of here. 2 o'clock. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7 30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. Sprinklers, right? So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Yeah, it's gotta be the sprinklers. We've established a time that it took place somewhere between 9 o'clock. Yep. And the yeah, Whoops. Yeah, more fuck. Than enough time to commit. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would... I fast forwarded too long. All right. We've established a time that took place somewhere between 9 o'clock. Yep. And the cook... Yeah, from 7 30. Boom. Really? Don't scare me like that. It makes me think something weird is going on. Hold on. So I've got fragments near the dead body, exploded body analysis, and sprinklers. Between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. So you say 10. So 10 is an option. 7:30 is an option. That's more than enough time to commit murder. So Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. What do they want from me here? Because I hit 7:30 with sprinklers, and I—I I mean 9, 9 p.m. with sprinklers. Happens in the garden at the same time every morning. Should be able to figure out when the body must have appeared in the garden. Yeah, the sprinklers. Established a time frame. Is it the exploded body analysis? The upper half of the body remained on fire because it's the upper half is soaking wet while the bottom remained dry. I'll try the exploded body analysis. Oh, uh, shit. Really? Shoot. What the fuck are you looking for? We've established a time frame for the murder. Sprinklers, exploded body, and fragments. 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock... I seriously have no goddamn idea what they want with this. I've hit 7.30 with both sprinklers and the body analysis. Both of which are, like, pointing towards the thing that Makoto is giving me a hint about. Burnt the upper half of the body. The bottom half remained dry. And the sprinklers programmed to go on every morning at 7.30. If the body had been in the garden before 7.30, it would have gotten wet. That has to be it. There, like, is no other option. That's more than enough time to commit. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now... I'm gonna fucking fail this thing just because it, it's not We've taking what I want. time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. 
Watch, I'll do it again. The sprinklers bounces right off of it. Like, what the fuck? Wait. No, that bounce off. That bounce off is like saying that it doesn't work. So that was a clear break off. It didn't work. Whoops. Okay, so let me try the body. Like, what the fuck do you want from me? We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock Just because and I have no other option. And 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi. That's more than enough time, so Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be... We've established a time I seriously am just worried that, like, this is... bugged at this point. Like, nothing I do wants to attack that 7.30 thing. And now, now I've lost. Now i failed. Nobody believes me. Class trial's adjourned. Everybody votes. Everybody says it's me. Although, in this case, unlike most cases... Um, there, there's an actual reason for assuming it was me. Sprinkler's exploded body and fragments near the dead body. We've established Oh. Hold on. Are you seriously going to make me use the fucking fragments? Cuz we found this bomb in the morning. Somewhere between 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock and up and the cook class and it's 7.30. Nope, okay, 7.30 is just immune. Nothing I do to 7.30 wants to work. Shoot. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock and This is infuriating. And 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and the cook class and it's 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would... We've established a time. It took place somewhere between 9 o'clock. Yep. And the cook class So, I've tried everything on 7.30, and I've even, murder, I've even tried 10 on 7.30. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Do you seriously want me to hit... We've established a time frame. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock. No. What do you want from me? Shoot. We've established a time. It took place somewhere between nine o'clock. Yep. And it's not the time I'm worried. Well, I, it, it's not the, the three minutes I'm worried about. There's something that happens in the garden at the same time every morning. Thinking back, the corpse was almost totally dry. In which case, I should be able to figure out when the body must have appeared in the garden. Yeah. Like everything about these hints is saying that I should be saying. Is, is pointing to saying that the sprinklers go off at 7.30 and the body was dry, thus it must have gotten in after 7.30. And yet that doesn't work! The time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and the coder doesn't have an out. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. I am infuriated by this. Like, and for the sake of moving on here, because I don't have anybody with me right now to jar my mind in the right direction, I have to look up what they want here. Because I know, I know what it actually is, but it's not taking my line of reasoning. And that's the most frustrating part about these types of mystery games.